Thanks to Henry Cavill's ouster from the role of Superman, the aftershocks are spreading throughout what's left of the DC Extended Universe. The latest hammer to fall in this story is that Superman's planned cameo in The Flash has been excised, though we wonder if that might have happened even if Henry stayed. Keep watching to learn more about Superman's fate in the DC film franchise and his future. First, this was a cameo that was already filmed, and Cavill wasn't the only one. According to a report from The Hollywood Reporter, the actor had already filmed his cameo scene for the upcoming Flash movie, and Gal Gadot had similarly shot a cameo as well. It looks like these were two separate scenes. Not that it matters since neither one is going to be in the final movie. The movie, directed by Andy Muschietti, is set to feature a real who's who of past DC characters. Michael Keaton is set to appear as the Batman he played in Tim Burton's movies, which are now said to be an alternate universe from the DCEU. It's also going to feature appearances from Adam West as yet another version of Batman, as well as Christopher Reeve's Superman. On top of all that, Ben Affleck and Michael Shannon are making their returns as Batman and General Zod, respectively. How can a movie feature so many cameos? Well, that's because it's supposedly adapting 2011's Flashpoint storyline from the comics. That was an arc that saw Barry travel back in time to stop the murder of his mom and create a whole new timeline in the process. But if all these actors and characters are appearing in the movie, why did Henry Cavill and Gal Gadot get cut? You've probably heard that things are going down at Warner Bros. right now, but allow us to explain in some more detail. Now, we'll start from the beginning, when the hype train really took off. In the wake of 2017's Justice League, which ended up being a flop at the box office, Henry Cavill's future as the DCEU Superman seemed uncertain. There were stories here and there of the negotiations between Cavill and Warner Bros., but they didn't seem to be going anywhere. And until about a year ago, it seemed like Henry had followed Ben Affleck out of the franchise. This was in spite of the fact that Superman made a cameo in the post credit scene of Shazam. Face down only, though, and it was clearly someone else. But as the release date of Black Adam approached, Dwayne Johnson wouldn't stop talking about Superman and how he had to return to the franchise just so his Black Adam could face him. This was backed up by other rumors that Henry Cavill would be reprising his role as Superman, and that was even part of the reason why he bailed on Netflix's The Witcher. The rumors were confirmed in the post credit scene of Black Adam, which gave us a few seconds of Henry Cavill back with the big red S on his chest. Symbol for hope indeed. As the days went by, Cavill confirmed that he was back and ready to pick things up where he'd left off. A new Superman movie was on the cards, and it was something that Warner's higher-ups were very excited about. Moving on, while Henry Cavill was getting ready to become Superman again, other things were afoot at Warner. When Warner Bros. merged with Discovery, their new CEO, David Zasloff, must have been really horrified at the state of things because he immediately embarked on a quest to cut all the fat from Warner's balance sheet. Part of that strategy was realigning the priorities of the slate DC Films, the arm of the company that was producing superhero movies. At first, the Batgirl film was killed in the cradle, and some release dates got shuffled around, but then rumors started to emerge that Warner was looking to start from scratch. They were on the lookout for a Kevin Feige type who would provide a singular creative vision to steer the franchise, and they got it in James Gunn and Peter Safran, a duo that had worked wonders for Marvel and DC in the past. DC Films was killed off and replaced by DC Studios, a counterpart of Marvel Studios, and Gunn and Safran are running the show. It's become increasingly clear that the next couple of DC EU movies will be the last we'll ever see of this franchise, with Gunn looking to start from zero on their new era of DC movies. None of the actors seem to be along for the ride. Henry Cavill is out. Gal Gadot is pretty much out. Jason Momoa has
has lost the Aquaman role, but may be eyeing Lobo instead, and Ezra Miller is definitely not coming back. Next, what does this mean for the DCEU and its actors? Well, it looks like 2023 will bring us the very last of the movies that are still hanging on to the DCEU timeline. Those include Shazam, Fury of the Gods, the aforementioned Flash movie, a Blue Beetle movie in August, and then later, Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom. It might have been interesting for the Flashpoint movie to be the end of this universe, but it looks like Aquaman will be the last one we see in Zack Snyder's Lost Kingdom. As for the million movie and TV projects that were under development in this franchise, well, unless Gunn wants to fold them into his universe, you might as well forget about them. This, ironically, includes Gunn's own projects, which included a movie that would take place in the same realm as The Suicide Squad, a series centering on Amanda Waller, and of course, season two of Peacemaker. It's possible that Gunn and Safran will opt to keep the cast and characters of their shows and movies intact, but it's clear that all the other actors have got to go. So far, Henry Cavill is the only one to have addressed the DCEU firing spree, acknowledging that Gunn and Safran have got to do what they got to do. But make no mistake, folks, this truly is the end of an era. Now, Gunn is apparently developing a Superman movie featuring a younger version of the character. This begs the question, now, who's going to play the character next? Instagram artist Clements.Inc. has thrown their hat in the ring with a really great illustration of the character played by Euphoria heartthrob Jacob Elordi. This choice might seem out of the left field if you only know Elordi from Euphoria, but the artwork is certainly convincing. Clements.Inc. has decided to kit out Superman in a variation, or an update if you prefer, of the Max Fleischer design of the costume. It's a mostly blue suit with a red underwear on the outside accent around the navel and upper thighs, though the red belt with the gold buckle is now replaced by a gold belt with a red buckle. The ankle lining of his red boots is trimmed with gold, and the pattern is mirrored on his arms and trimmed around the neckline. The most distinctive feature of the suit is the emblem. While most movies have used the classic red S on a gold background with a red outline, this suit has a black background with a gold outline. Now, the artist hasn't explained this in the caption, so you might be wondering why they chose this costume instead of a spin on the classic suit. Well, it might be because a version of the Fleischer suit was also worn by Supes in the Kingdom Come storyline, which James Gunn recently spotlighted on his Twitter account. There's a good chance this might be the suit we see on the next Superman. Next up, here's what we think of Jacob Elordi as Superman. So the actor clearly looks the part. He can easily pull off the affable look that would go with his Clark Kent persona, and he can also radiate the compassion and earnestness that is part of the Superman package. But there's more to playing a character than just looks, and if we're trying to follow up Henry Cavill in the role, Jacob would have some big shoes to fill. The actor doesn't have a lot of experience, having made his debut in The Kissing Booth in 2018. He did get to act alongside the previous Batman, Ben Affleck, and current A-lister Ana de Armas in Deep Water, so he's got some chops. The biggest test of his acting capabilities is going to be trying to match Austin Butler's brilliant performance as Elvis in the upcoming Priscilla. None of these roles are very physical, though. Depending on how much of Elvis's swagger Elordi will be trying to recreate, of course. But if Elordi can rise to the role of Superman, we think he'd be a great long-term pick for the character. James Gunn is plotting out a 10-year course for the DC movie franchise, and recasting soups in the middle would be less than ideal. At this point in Elordi's career, he can embark on a commitment like that and have a lot of career left when it's all said and done. No, about that costume though. It seems like a lot of fans are clamoring for a new look for Superman, and we're with them on that. The character has been dressed in different shades of the same look throughout his movie appearances, and if this is a bold new era for the DC franchise, the character needs a bold new look.
look. However, we're not sure if the Fleischer look is the way to go. Instagram artist JSC Comic Art has done a few realistic renditions of the Fleischer costume on Henry Cavill, and that kind of highlights what we don't like about it. The black, sand, dark golds look really dark on screen, which suits a story like Kingdom Come, but shouldn't be the hero's default look. Plus, the underwear on the outside thing is never really gonna work on screen, we say. We submit for your consideration the version of the costume that Jim Lee designed for the new 52. Now, we know that the idea of bringing anything from that dark era of DC Comics is going to be a non-starter, but to be fair, Lee designed some amazing costumes for that time. This is a take on the classic all blue look, but a stylized red belt breaks up all the blue in an interesting way. We also like that the sleeve cuffs come to a point and that the suit looks to be made up of thin armor plates. That's it for today's video. Let us know in the comment section below who you would cast as the next Superman and what his costume should look like. But whatever you do, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.